Oh yeah! Welcome back to my next playthrough series. Yes, we're going back to 1987. This is Arkham Horror, the board game for Monster Hunters. It's the first edition. And yeah, it's literally 1987. It's this nice little sort of laminated board that's a little spongy. I hope it's not too reflective. It is quite shiny. Uh, and I have everything all set up. We're going to be playing a three-character game. Uh, and the gist of the game, of course, any Arkham Horror game is you're battling monsters. You're trying to close gates. You're trying to stop the world from ending in Arkham. This is the nice little town of Arkham. Actually, the art's really cool in this. We have all the other worldly locations up at the top uh, when you go through the gates to try and close them. We have a spell deck. We have an item deck. We have a gate deck. Uh, and we have a Doom track. Of course, what would an Arkham Horror game be without some kind of tracking of Doom? Doom Factor. So it starts here at 1. If it gets to Doom of Arkham, well, of course you lose. Every time a gate appears somewhere, the Doom increases by 1. Of course, it starts here at 1 because we start the game with one gate on the board. We don't know where the gate goes. It's kind of a cool part of this game. You have to go through it to find out where it is. So you never know till you jump through the gate. And you can bypass monsters to just jump into a gate. You don't have to fight them or encounter them if a gate is in that location. I'm pretty sure how it works. I read over the rules. Again, the very first edition, so uh, rules are kind of a uh, little bit, no, not iffy, but, you know, and they come on these uh, this big rule book sheet here. Uh, they tell you have another entire thing about your investigator, all about what they can do and where gates appear and exciting things like that. Then you have encounter locations. So all of the locations on the board, like the hospital, the sanitarium, they each have a nice little graphic of a do. So like police station and you will roll, of course, a six sided die because you have to roll dice in these games lots of times. And yeah, figure out what's going on. I do believe these are the original dice that came with the game. They're really, <laughs> really microscopically small. And I don't know why the ones look like giant eyeballs, but they do. Uh, and I do believe, and I had these dice in with the game as well, I think I just added these in from, I don't even know, maybe these were the original dice? I can't figure out which are the original dice for this game, but I think it's the tiny little ones. Alright, and I'll be using, of course, my own little white mini dice to track sanity and strength. This is your two things that you have in the game. And we have actual paper money in this game. Yes, indeed, this is like actual paper money. So we have tens, fives and ones. Of course, we have HP Lovecraft on the tens. We have HP Lovecraft on the fives, and we have George <laughs> on the dollar bills. Of course, they're single-sided. I don't even know if you're allowed to make uh, fake money like this anymore. I think there's some legal issues with that. But anyway, oh, good lord. Okay, let's take a look at our three characters we're starting with. We, got, we have Joe Diamond, we have Harvey Walters, we have Carolyn Fern. Everybody starts out with three items, a charity card, a spell, $13. So let's take a look at our three characters, and then we're going we're gonna to have a turn of the game. We'll see how it works. Again, very old school, very 1987. Actually, quite a fun game to play, so we're going to get into it. Let's take a look at our characters. And here we have our three intrepid investigators. We have Joe Diamond. There's little slider things for these, but I don't like them, so I'm just using dice. You have to have a total of 10 between your sanity and your strength on each character. So you set it anywhere you like when you begin the game. Uh, and so I've set them thus. So we have Carolyn Fern has got 5 strength, 5 sanity. Oh, and you can't have under 3. So you can't have like a 7. Uh, well, you can have 7 and 3. You have to set 1 to 3. So 7 is the maximum in the game. You can boost your abilities up to 7, but that's as high as they'll ever get. Uh, and they can go down to zero. You go down to zero. Uh, if you go down to zero sanity, you end up in the sanitarium. <laughs> if you go down to zero strength, you end up in the hospital. And if you I, if you go from zero sanity or zero health, then you're in another world. Like you've gone through a gate and that happens, um, you're done. You're lost in time and space and you are never to be seen again. So everyone's got $13. Uh, let's start with Joe Diamond. He has fight. These are skill cards. You draw three skill cards at the beginning of the game for three player. You draw a skill card per player and then you can rearrange the skills any way you like. I gave Joe Diamond plus one fight uh, because he's got the shotgun. And the shotgun is plus six physical attacks. Some monsters can only attack with magical attacks. Some are 
just physical attack, magical does nothing. He has a taxi whistle. You can summon a taxi for a dollar. You can just it takes you anywhere you would like to go on the board. There are certain monsters that will block passage, block taxis, uh, and he's the red um, token, kind of like the uh, the old uh, the old style games from the 80s. Basically, have these little plastic tokens. So Joe Diamond is this one. <laughs> so yes. This game is 1987, let's not forget. So, uh, predates the the day of super cool components and these little paper things. These are like little paper cards, but they're still in pretty good shape and they've lasted quite well over the years. So he has a taxi whistle. So basically for a buck, he can just call a taxi, go anywhere he wants. He's a shotgun, uh, six physical damage. He has an elder sign. These are really cool. Harvey's got one too. And basically, you can destroy a gate with this, and you leave the elder sign in the location where you destroyed the gate. And gates can never, gates and monsters can never appear there again. Both sides of the gate, you spend two sanity. Uh, keep this gate as totally move uh, doom back by one. So you move the doom track back one as well. An elder sign, so it's cool that we pulled one for Harvey and one for Joe Diamond, and he's got bind monster spell, banish a monster from Earth. So you can just. Go to any single monster on the board. Some of them are really, really bad, and get rid of it. Or this is also uh, you can use it to to send a monster to attack a gate, a target or a gate. So cool. So some of the super strong monsters you can have them attack a gate, destroy a gate because we win the game if after the second turn all gates on the board are closed. Um, yeah, and you'll see how easy that is to do. All right, so that's Joe Diamond. And we have Harvey Walters. He's got a strength of six. Or sorry, sanity six, and a strength of four. Yes, so sanity's on the left, strength on the right, and Carolyn's five and five. So I set them up that way, and so he has a healing stone to heal. Be in the same space of the target. Roll a d6. A result equal to or less than the user's strength successfully uh, grants the target d6 strength points usable once per turn for the rest of the game. That is really cool. So he'll be able to use that on himself if he wants to. So if he rolls uh, less than four. If he rolls a 1, 2, or 3, he can boost his strength up a d6. He has a Cavalry Saber. Of course, uh, Harvey Walters has that. Plus 2 physical damage, one-handed weapon. He has the Elder Sign we talked about. He has Heal. Add 2 strength points to target. Use once per turn. So basically, I'm pretty sure in the game you get like you can move, and then you can do something. And that's basically your turn. So kind of like a two action. Kind of like the last game we just played where you get two actions. And the Charity. I forgot to mention the Charity. Charity is a little wonky. It's if you have the fewest items, the fewest spells, the fewest amount of money, you can go to, I think, the church. Uh, I have to re-up the rules again. And then you can get some you can get some stuff. So you get some money, you can get some items or whatever. So it's a kind of a leveling thing in the game. So if somebody lost all their items and they're down to like their last dollar and everyone else seems to be doing better, you can actually go, I think it's to the church, cash in your charity. But then it says uh, the next monster or gate trophy goes back to the pile, so you don't gain it. So when you kill monsters and you close gates in the game, you collect them. And then at the end, if you win the game, you see who's the biggest and baddest gate monster killer. So, and I forgot to mention, on uh, Joe Diamond, he's fast talk of four, fight of five, knowledge two, sneak of three. Harvey's got fast talk two, fight three, knowledge five, plus one knowledge. He has a knowledge of six. He can never fail a knowledge roll because... You have to roll less than, uh, equal to or less than your ability to succeed. So if he has a six, he'll, he can't roll lower than a six on a six sided die. A sneak of three, and Carolyn's got fast talk four, fight of four, knowledge three, and sneak of three. All right, so we've talked about Harvey stuff. Over to Carolyn, she's got an enchanted knife. Uh, this weapon strikes for four points of damage during combat. One-handed weapon. So it's magical for, for damage. She's got the Blue Watcher of the Pyramid. Magical. Painted with emerald. Egyptian eye protection. Fragment dash to the ground. Banishes one, any one mythos monster from Earth. Or closes any one gate. Lose D6 strength points from the concussion. Use once. So we're going to make sure her strength is pumped up as high as possible before she blows up a gate. She has some holy water. Grants the order plus six magical attack for all, for all of one turn. Then it's discarded, so that's a pretty powerful magic attack. She has Shriveling, plus six magic attack. Sanity cost to cast it. She blows a mind uh, sanity to cast it, but it's plus six magical attack. And so she could use the Enchanted Knife and the Shriveling at the same time. 
I believe, to do an attack. And she has the charity as well. So those are our characters. Let's get to the board, and we're going to have a quick little first turn to see how the game works. All right, let's begin the game. It's going to be a pretty quick little turn because we're probably not going to run into any of these monsters. We will take a look at these monsters as we continue here. Uh, we're going to, we have to go in turn order, so it's going to be Joe Diamond, Harvey Walters, and then Carolyn Fern. And we just rinse and repeat every time. I also forgot to mention, the way we lose is if we ever have eight gates on the board of a three-player game at the same time, it's game over. Uh, Arkham swallowed, <laughs> basically. So we're going to start with Joe Diamond. He's right here. We roll two six-sided dice, and that's as far as he can move. Now, he could spend a dollar or use the taxi, go anywhere. Uh, but I think we're just going to roll the dice for him. So he gets six. Of course, roll and move. What more do you want? So for six, he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. The reason he's doing that is he's got the best chance of taking out monsters. And these monsters are going to activate here pretty soon. All right, and that's everything he can do. Uh, so order place of the investigator phase. All investigators move. All investigators do things, have encounters, uh, meets a monster, have an encounter. Okay, so it's kind of, kind of intuitive, kind of not really. But we'll see how this works. So Joe Diamond has moved. He's, he's sitting out here in the street. He's kind of waiting for monsters. All right, so next up we have Harvey Walters. We're going to roll for him. He gets nine. He can move nine spaces. Where does he want to go? I think he's going to hightail it. He is the yellow. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think he's going to stop moving right here at the taxi space because next turn he can spend a dollar for the taxi and just go anywhere he wants. So he's not going to move his full nine movement. And then we have Carolyn, who's the blue. And she has seven movement, and I think she's going to head maybe to the woods. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. She could end up going to the shunned house. It does take you a movement to go from the board into the location. All right. I do believe that's all the movements and all the actions for the characters. They're all out in the street, so I don't think they're going to have any encounters. Let me just check the rules. And then I think now all the monsters are going to act. Well, I guess what I should show you is right here, actually, rules of Arkham Horror. This is the order of play. So basically, the investigator phase, uh, you collect money from a retainer. If you have a retainer, you get that, I believe, at the Arkham, the newspaper. Uh, and then we go. So the investigator, move, they wait, move, or take a taxi, and then they have an encounter. So you'd have an encounter if you were actually in a location. None of our uh, investigators are in a location at the moment. So that's not going to happen. We could use a skill. We could use charity, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's the order of Dagon. You go to the charity for that. So investigator meets a monster. It didn't happen. So if we had met a monster, then they would go ahead. They would either sneak past the monster or fight it. Uh, so this tells you about the investigator fighting. And then we have the mythos phase. Because what would Arkham Horror be without a mythos phase, right? So now a random gate appears. We roll on the gate appearance table. Uh, and then all monsters move. All monsters attack if they encounter any investigators. So right now we're going to roll for a random gate. And I believe you get a gate and a monster. I'm going to double check that as well. But of course what we want to do for Harvey. And he's the only one that can do it. He can cast an actual spell. Because he moved to the taxi space. And then we're going to have him do heal. He might as well. Now to cast a spell you make a knowledge check. His knowledge as we know is 5 plus 1 is 6. So he can't roll higher than six on a six-sided die because that's the only way you fail is to roll higher than your knowledge. So he's going to go ahead for his action. After he moved, he's going to add two strengths. Add two strengths. So he's going to add two strengths to himself. Why would he not do that? So now he's got a, a strength of six and a sanity of six. Cool. All right. Now let's go and see where those gates are going to appear. Or the one gate anyway. All right. So on the corner of the board here, we do have gate appearance table. So we're going to be rolling two dice. <laughs> Two little funky dice. And this is going to tell us where the gate appears. We have our gate stack here. We don't know which gate it is. We don't know where it goes. And we roll. Can we see that? Yes, we have a an 8. We rolled an 8. The Silver Twilight Lodge. So we're going to take the top card off the gate deck. We're not going to look at it. And it's going to get a random monster as well. We're going to go head over to the Silver Twilight Lodge and dump down a gate. All right, and up here we have the Silver Twilight Lodge. We have two gates on the board. Remember, we get eight. We lose the game. And, of course, we have the all-popular Bag of Doom. This is loaded, and I mean loaded, with monster tokens. And out comes a random monster. And what do we have? Oh, my God. Yep, it looks like a Gug. 
has come out on the board. Oh man, that thing is nasty as can be. All right, so that was uh, the uh, beginning of the Mythos phase. And now all monsters move. So we're gonna figure out how all the monsters move. We might as well start with this guy right here. How movement works is, uh, it's just, I don't believe, oh no, it goes left to and it's a blocker. It blocks all the locations. It blocks taxi movement, blocks character movement until you move into a space, of course, and then you can attack it. So it's gonna, it's a left hand, it's gonna, left and it's gonna move two spaces. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it has a strength of 17. And a sanity, if you encounter it, if you pass your sanity check, which is equal to your sanity or less on a die roll, you only take one sanity loss. If you fail your sanity check, you take three. This thing's brutal. So it's gonna come out of the gate, it's gonna move. So it's gonna go left hand, it's gonna go one, and its left hand would be this way. Two. So it's just moving down the street now. It's blocked off either location and it's nasty. All right, let's get to the other monsters, see what they are, and have them move. All right, we have three other monsters here sitting at the gate. We have an Elder Thing, I do believe. It goes right handed five. An Elder Thing, it's got uh, strength of 12, zero, and one sanity loss. Not terrible. So it's going to come out of Founder's Rock, which is here. It's going to come out and it's going to go right five. So it's going to go one. Two, three, four, five. And away it goes this way. And that's kind of why we wanted Joe Diamond there. He might be able to take that out in the next turn. Next lovely creature. Oh yeah, I should say the beginning of the game, you draw a random gate and you draw three monsters out of the bag. So we have a dimensional shambler and it has strength of 11, sanity zero, two, right-handed three. So away it goes. One, two, three. It's going this way. And they will just keep cycling around and around the board. And we also now have, is this the Night Gaunt? It's a flyer, so it just moves towards the nearest investigator. It moves six, strength of 14, has a 0-1 sanity loss, drops you through the nearest gate. That's actually pretty cool. So if it gets to you, it just dumps you into a gate, which is somewhat beneficial, uh, I do believe. So there we go, we have a flyer, six. So it's going to go, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It will actually go the shorter way to get to the closest investigator, which is Joe Diamond. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's flying on its way. And that's it. Well, that's basically the first turn. So we would take a look here. Now there would be sanity rolls going on if uh, any investigator... Uh, gets in the space of a, of a monster, the monsters would attack, doing d6 damage, <laughs> d6 strength damage. Investigator, you can sneak or counter attack. So yeah, we don't really want them running into us, we'd rather run into them. All right, we're gonna zoom out and we're gonna wrap up our first episode of Arkham Horror, first edition for today. And yes, I forgot a gate appeared. Du, 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 doom goes to two. Remember, it gets up to 14. It's game over. We also get eight gates on the board at the same time. It's game over. So we got to try and take out the monsters, go to different locations and get items and stuff. Close the gates is the main thing. If we can close all gates, the end of the investigator's turn. I do believe we win the game. So yeah, that's how that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, likes. This is Arkham Horror, the board game for Monster Hunters. First edition. It looks kind of like this. And this is it. This is what we're playing. So we're going to play it through to the end. It's kind of a long game, but it's it's pretty wild. We'll see what happens. We'll probably just get annihilated, as any good Arkham Horror game should do to your investigators. So thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow for the continuation Arkham Horror First Edition. One super quick little correction here at the end of the episode. Joe Diamond had a movement of six and I went one, two, three, four, five, six instead of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So Joe Diamond is here and not here. See you tomorrow, continuation Arkham Horror First Edition.